Hi, this is the story of Savvy Aviation and how it came to be. I'm Mike Bush, founder and CEO of Savvy, and the company's story is intimately intertwined with my own story. You might know me from the hundreds of articles I've written for a dozen different general aviation publications over the past 45 years, or from my monthly maintenance webinars, or from the hundreds of technical forums at Oshkosh that I've given over the years or perhaps as the co-founder of AvWeb, the first digital aviation magazine and news service. Today, largely as a result of all my writing, speaking, outreach, and evangelism, I'm arguably the best known ANPIA in general aviation. That's pretty astonishing because I've never made my living swinging wrenches on airplanes or run a maintenance shop. Actually, I came to aviation maintenance relatively late in life. I grew up in New York and had an Ivy League education at Dartmouth, Princeton, and Columbia, where I was trained as a mathematician and got involved in software development at the dawn of the computer age. While in college, I became a private pilot and earned my instrument rating. When I was 23, I moved to California and went to work as a computer scientist for a Fortune 500 company. I bought my first airplane, a 1968 Cessna 182. I flew it for four years, then moved up to a 1972 Belanca Super Viking. After 10 years in the corporate world, I went out on my own and for the next 20 years I enjoyed a successful career as a microcomputer software developer and entrepreneur. I sold the Belanca, flew rental aircraft for a while, and then in 1987 bought the Cessna 310 that I'm still flying 30 years later. Up till then, aircraft maintenance was something I left to professional mechanics. That changed in 1989 when the Greybeard IA at my shop, who I trusted implicitly, was replaced by a young ANP named Rod. I wasn't sure that I could trust this kid, so I hung around the shop to keep a close eye on Rod as he annualed my airplane. Rod soon handed me a screwdriver and put me to work. I was surprised to find that I enjoyed working on my plane. It was such a refreshing change from the solitary, sedentary, cerebral nature of my day job as a software developer. Before long, I was doing virtually 100% of the maintenance on my airplane under Rod's watchful eye, and later supervised by several other ANPs. My maintenance cost went down drastically as my sweat equity increased. Then something remarkable happened. My airplane became squawk-free, stayed that way, and its dispatch reliability sharply improved. Once I started doing my own maintenance, not once did I cancel a flight due to a mechanical issue. That made no sense to me. How could it be that a complex turbocharged twin maintained by a rank amateur mechanic like me could be so much more reliable than it had been when maintained by professionals who worked on airplanes every day? It would take years before I discovered the answer to that riddle. Meanwhile, after 30 years as a software developer, I started feeling burned out and decided to try something radically different by co-founding AvWeb, the first internet-based aviation publication. I served as its editor-in-chief for the next seven and a half years. In 2001, we sold AvWeb to Belvoir Publications and I earned my A&P ticket. Finally, I could legally sign off all my own work on my airplane. Three years later, at age 60, I passed the IA exam and could sign off my own annuals. In 2008, at age 64, I was named National Aviation Maintenance Technician of the Year. The sale of AvWeb in 2001 had me once again looking for a new challenge. Having learned quite a lot about aircraft maintenance, I was convinced that the way most maintenance professionals were going about it was wrongheaded and not in the best interests of aircraft owners. I was convinced that I'd stumbled onto a better approach to maintenance that achieved higher levels of safety and dispatch reliability with lower cost and less downtime. Years later, I learned this approach had been previously discovered by a British scientist, C.H. Waddington, in the late 1940s, and then independently discovered again at United Airlines in the late 1960s by scientists Stan Nolan and Howard Heap, who gave it a name, Reliability-Centered Maintenance. I learned that RCM had saved the airlines a fortune in reduced costs and downtime by radically reducing the amount of preventive maintenance performed, shifting from doing preventive maintenance on a fixed timetable to doing it strictly on condition, narrowing the focus to preventing only failures that have serious consequences, and employing a run-to-failure philosophy for components that aren't safety critical. 
Yet the GA industry didn't seem to be doing any of this and was still doing maintenance the same way as it did in the 1950s. I wanted to share this better approach with my fellow GA aircraft owners, so I created a 17-hour total immersion weekend seminar to teach these concepts. My seminars got great reviews in the aviation press, were mostly sold out, and scored high marks for my 1,000 course graduates. But I wasn't satisfied. Although some of my students took my teachings to heart, most didn't and continued letting their a ps do things the old way, resulting in lots of unnecessary maintenance and often serious sticker shock. Finally, it dawned on me. Most aircraft owners find it extremely difficult to say no to their a ps Though most aircraft owners are successful entrepreneurs, executives, and professionals who are accustomed to being masters of their domain, when it comes to aircraft maintenance, they tend to be way outside their comfort zone and sometimes act like sniveling wimps when dealing with ANPs. When a mechanic says their plane needs three new cylinders or a prop overhaul or some other high-ticket maintenance, too few owners question whether it's really necessary or why. Most just wince, bend over, and pull out their checkbook. Then I thought, what if an aircraft owner could hire a seasoned ANPIA as his representative in dealings with maintenance shops and mechanics? Someone with the self-confidence and assertiveness and maintenance experience to question an ANP's recommendations. Someone who had no hesitation to say no when appropriate. After all, that's the way things have always worked in the world of corporate jet aviation. No Gulfstream or Challenger owner ever just hands the keys over to an A&P and says, call me when you're done. The owner always is represented by his director of maintenance or a hired gun maintenance manager to represent him in dealings with the maintenance organization, where invoices can run into six figures. But conventional wisdom held it was not economically feasible for someone who owns a Bonanza or a Centurion or a Cirrus or a Mooney or a Saratoga. The more I thought about it, the more I became convinced that it could be done, not by having someone physically present while the aircraft was in the shop, but by having someone virtually present using the internet and smartphones and other modern technologies. And so the idea of savvy aircraft maintenance management was born. It took a year of planning and preparation and team building and software development before Savvy opened its virtual doors in 2008. Since then, Savvy has grown steadily from a one-service company to a diversified firm offering a broad portfolio of maintenance-related services for owner-flown aircraft. We launched a national pre-buy management service for aircraft buyers. We added a consulting service for owners who wanted to manage their own maintenance but have access to our technical expertise. We created a new division dedicated to providing expert analysis of digital engine monitor data. Most recently, in partnership with Sporties, we created a nationwide 24-7 breakdown assistance service, essentially a AAA for GA. But our original full-service concierge maintenance management service, Savvy MX, remains our core offering and accounts for about two-thirds of Savvy's business. And that's the story of how Savvy Aviation came to be. I hope you'll explore our website and learn more about the various services that we offer. Meantime, thanks for watching.